Ariel Hawani here. <laughs> In UFC Melbourne, Australia for UFC 193 at Etihad Stadium alongside UFC President Dana White. And you know it's a big event when the president speaks to us. It's great to see you again. Good to see you. It has been a while. It has been a while. And we're here inside this amazing stadium. Uh, 50, 60,000 people, they're setting it up. As the president of the company, considering this journey that you've been on, when you see this, what goes through your mind? I love these kind of things. You know, the last one was in Toronto. Um, it, it was a great event. It was fun. A lot of energy here in the city. And, uh, you know, we're, we're building. This hasn't been done yet. Notice how the roof is still kind of open. Oh, yeah. They had to open the roof and then close it section by section as they put the riggings up. We literally have every LED in the country. We actually had to borrow some stuff from Taylor Swift wow. to, uh, to pull this event off in here, you know, the, the way that we do it. Initially, the talk was 70000 Is that still the plan for Sunday? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, ticket sales have been great. All the expensive uh, seats are sold. The only ones that are left are the cheap seats. So with a lot of, uh, we got a lot of promotion going on, a lot of buzz here in, in the city, and I, I think we're going to get close. Do you have any idea, ballpark figure, what the gate will be? Um, I U.S. Don't, dollars? Off the top. Oh, there's Pete over there. Even Pete? though, Pete Tropic? Yeah. What's the gate going to be? Huh? What's the gate going to be? Uh, 8.5 million? 8.5. In Aussie dollars? Yep. Do you know the conversion? What's the conversion? <laughs> now we're putting him on the... <laughs> Now we're putting him on the spot. This is riveting television right yeah. here. Yeah. Huh? Over six U.S. Okay. Over six million dollars U.S. So, yeah. so that will beat the record of 129, but not the gate in Toronto, because right, that right, was like right. 11, 12 yeah, million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Toronto gate was 11 something. But you have said in the past sometimes these events kind of make you nervous because it's so big and you want you don't want to compromise the integrity of the event. Right. Do you feel comfortable that every seat in the house will be a good oh, one? Yeah. So here's the thing: when you look at this building, there's not a bad seat in the house when, or, or, in, in the circle here. You know, it's the floor seating that is always the uh, right. you know the, the the tough ones. But the floor sold out. You know, we, we're doing everything we can. We always try to make sure that everybody gets a good experience. That's why we have every LED in the country here. Um, but there's something. There, there, there's something about being in a stadium for a big fight and, and the energy and the buzz, so it's going to be fun. Do you think it's bigger because it's Ronda as opposed to the original main event? Not putting those guys down, but Ronda is you know, the biggest face in the history of the sport at this point. Do you, did you feel like it went up once she was added to the card? Yeah, well, the thing is, the difference between Ronda and everybody else, obviously she's a huge superstar um, you know, in and outside of the octagon, but uh, you know, she, she grinds, man. She's, she puts in the work. She works like no other fighter we have on the roster ever in the history of the roster. Um, she's been here. For, she got here on Halloween, and she's been here, you know, doing media and doing PR, and she's the best, man. Is there one thing a celebrity has talked to you about her, a story that came out, something <clears throat> about that just you were like, wow, I can't believe just how big she is right now? Well, it's just, uh, you know, normally, you know, if you saw the – the embedded show that we did for yeah, Fox, you know, true, all the yeah. celebrities that, that are talking about. It. We had celebrities calling to to to, to want to talk about Rhonda. I mean, today we got um, uh, what the hell's her name? Taylor Swift. I'm I'm fried. I just got off a plane, right. uh, but we we literally had somebody call today and said, "Hey, I want to talk about Rhonda." I mean, just everybody is. In fact, think about this. Think about you know, we were just talking about how big this thing is. No women's fight ever in the history of women's fighting has ever done anything close to this this is massive you know we always talk about going to stadiums and we end up here with uh, an event headlined by a woman and co-headlined by a woman you know co-main evented by a woman so it's it's a it's a, uh, it's a monumental event for us you said you're fried is it true that you flew all the way here and forgot your passport no so I, yeah i flew to lax and then forgot my passport i was supposed to be here yesterday at 10 in the morning Forgot my passport in Vegas, and uh, here I am. And then you have to go back to Vegas, get it, and then fly. You know, somebody brought it to me in L.A. And wow. Like, oh, okay. Well, at least that. You don't have to go back. That's that's a pretty big blunder for a travel veteran like yourself. It is. You know, it's uh, it's a first, and uh, it's, it's definitely a big one. Um, not throwing anybody under the bus, but it wasn't my fault. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <coughs> Holly Holm is a pretty big underdog, and it's funny because you remember, I remember first talking to you about her in Houston for UFC 136, and you were saying people were shouting at you, sign Holly Holm, and yet now people, they don't believe that she's you know, a credible opponent, but they did back then. Do you feel like she's not getting any respect, even from the odds makers as well? It's because Ronda has become this Tyson-like figure, and the reality is... Holly Holm has the height, the reach advantage. 
she has the, the style to stay on the outside, throw, you know, she, you know she's going to throw those front kicks to the body like, like um, the Jackson camp does. She's going to be attacking Ronda's knees from the outside. Um, you know, they throw those, those kicks down to the knees. She's going to use her range and distance to keep Ronda on the outside and try to pick her apart. Uh, the, the other thing that she has is the experience factor. This girl, this girl has 45 fights. She's been in like 40 something fights in her career. Ronda has 12. Mm. Um, so Ronda has become this Tyson like figure, but anything can happen in a fight. Last time Ronda fought was August 1st. It was a very quiet sports night, and that was a, an explosion, right? UFC 190. Do you have any sense as to how this will do? Because you have more competition with college football this time. Yeah, this thing's trending off the charts. Really? It's, yeah. You this think it will beat that one? Yeah, it's a massive event. Really? Massive event. Yes, it will beat the Brazil part. Wow. And, and even though you're in Australia and sometimes people get confused at the time, it won't affect it. Yeah, there's no confusion. It goes off the same time, you right. know, 7 o'clock Saturday night on the West Coast, 10 o'clock on the East Coast, just like any other fight. You were at the stare downs just moments ago. What did Joanna say to Valerie? Could you hear? She said, this is your last fight, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. She threw in the B word? Oh, yeah. Wow. Did Valerie say something back? Yeah. Uh, they were going back and forth. It was awesome. It was very oh, intense. Man. And then, uh, you, you know, I think uh, Valerie told her to fuck off at one point. Wow. She, there's something about Joanna where people connect with her. I don't know. You know, she doesn't speak, obviously, fluent English. But there's just something about her that people just love. What do you think it is? She's got a great personality. You know, she's very, you know, uh, upbeat, happy person, yet has that killer instinct, man. She, she's just a killer. And fighters love to watch her fight. Uh, her hands are unbelievable. She goes in... Uh, to finish you and to stop you. I mean, that, that, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. If you if you are a real fighter and you go in there and you're a finisher and you try to finish people, people love you. Same. That's the reason people love Ronda. Claudia is here. Is she next in line? Claudia is next in line. You know, provided everything goes smooth and nobody gets hurt and everything. Yes, Claudia. Claudia uh, has been working on her game. She looks unbelievable too. Another incredibly badass, talented fighter at 115 pounds. A couple more things. You got Bigfoot and Mark Hunt. I know you loved that first fight. You even had the T-shirt made about the rematch before right. there ever was a rematch. Right. Is it possible in your mind for this to surpass that one? I, it would be tough. Yeah. It would be tough for that fight to be better than the first one. Um, yeah, I, 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 if it's 10% if it's of the first one, it'll right. be a great fight. But um, definitely a rematch that I've been excited for for a long time and looking forward to. So we'll I'm surprised you're not wearing the t-shirt. Mm. This is a perfect chance to wear that t-shirt. Actually, I wore it here I remember, yes. for, the, for, the, uh, for the press conference. Okay, and you also have Uriah Hall coming back on short notice against Robert Whitaker. You were somewhat critical of him after the Ultimate Fighter. He didn't have that killer instinct. Do you think he's gone over the hump after doing what he did to Gegard Mousasi? Well, first of all, I love Robert Whitaker, man. This kid, I think, is one of the best up-and-coming talents in the sport. Um, he, he's he's well-rounded. He's aggressive. I love the way that kid fights. Such a huge fight for both these guys. You are right. Coming off a, a, an unbelievable uh, performance against uh, Musasi, even in the first round, staying out of his submissions the way that he did, and then finishing it the way he did in the second. Um, I, I I think that that Uriah Hall has kind of found his his groove now. I think he 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 realized. He needs to let it go. You imagine if you had a remote control and you could control that kid by remote. I mean, he, the, the, the talent that he has and the speed and the explosiveness is, is unbelievable. He's going to need all of it against Robert Whitaker because I love that fight. That, that's, that's a really good fight, too. Really excited about that one. And let's end on Ronda. She said this week, after this fight, I'm taking a break and hopefully return UFC 200. Are you on board with that idea? Yeah, that's my idea. Oh, yeah. Cyborg fight? She's going to take off and, and do her thing, relax, shoot a movie, and, uh, and then she'll come back probably for UFC 200, provided everything goes right. Rousey Cyborg, the return of GSP, CM Punk's debut. UFC 200 is looking like a real can't-miss event. <laughs> I just made the card up in my mind. That's, that was good. Yeah, you um, can take it. Well, there's, there's a lot of great fights coming up. You know, whatever happens with Conor and Aldo, right. one of those guys That's will true. fight again going into, in, into next year. John Jones possibly returning, um, you know. Vitor just won. Anderson Silva's hanging out there right now, ready to come back. Um, you know, we're ending the year with a huge bang, and, and next year's looking really good. This was fun. Yeah. It's like good two old friends again. catching up. <laughs> That's right. We missed you. Likewise. Thanks. Good to see you again. Good luck on Sunday. Thanks, brother.